Replay Guitar Exchange is your premier independent guitar store. Being independent is good. With all of the major brands, including new, vintage, and pre-owned, you can find the guitar, bass, amp, or accessory you are dreaming of. From vintage to the newest models, Replay Guitar Exchange can help you find that perfect piece. They have industry veteran expert staff, all players like you, down to the owner. You aren't just getting a great guitar, you're getting the Replay difference. Find them online at ReplayGuitar.com and find your dream guitar today. Vinny Tortorich here. Hey man, if you're a fan of Izzy, you might be a fan of me too. I'm the guy that gets people to lose a lot of weight. I have something free for you guys. This is no clickbait. Just go to VinnyTortorich.com and there's a big banner. It's a free PDF, How to Lose Weight. It's an intro guide to NSNG at VinnyTortorich.com. Go check it out exclusively for anyone who listens to Izzy Presley. Thank you. Rockwood Saloon Authentic Apparel takes rock and roll fashion to a new level with their tees and tanks for men and women. They also make custom shirts, jackets, vests, pants, hoodies, beanies, and more. The Rockwood Graphics Department can design anything from your logo, t-shirt design, promo posters, band swag, and printed at great prices. From tour shirts and custom stage gear to killer threads for the street to the stage, Rockwood Saloon has it all. Rockwood Saloon, authentic rock and roll apparel for stage and street. World Tour tested for quality, comfort, style, and durability. Check them out at www.rockwoodsaloon.com. That's rockwoodsaloon.com. Hi, this is Bobby Brown, and welcome to another fucking podcast. You kids with your loud music and your Dan Fogelberg, your Zima, hula hoops, and Pac-Man video games, don't you see people today have attention spans that can only be measured in nanoseconds? See, son? All legends never die. They just lose weight. It's like a legend and an out of wood from with a lot of life. Party time. Yes, it is party time. Hello, Hollywood. Hello, world. Hello, my loyal minions. It is good to see you. And as always, good to be seeing Izzy Presley right here with you. On another effing podcast. Great episode last week with Alec Grassi from Quiet Ride and Hookers and Blow. And this week we have Ricky Rackman rejoining the show. Bringing him in in just a minute here. Just got to get through the essentials before we get into that. Make sure you do hit up all the social media. At Real Izzy Presley. That is all the way across the board. Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And then, of course, the show page on Facebook is another effing podcast. Make sure you guys hit that shop button and buy stuff. I have lots of t-shirts available. Of course, the Drunken Summit t-shirts, the Loyal Minion t-shirts, the I Love Van Hagar Deal With It t-shirts, and I Don't Want Your Fucking CD t-shirts as well. So... Get all of those, and if you guys want to support the show monetarily, you absolutely can. If you don't want my t-shirts, just send me money. Izzy Presley at yahoo.com is the PayPal. And don't forget, you can catch me every morning on the Monsters of Rock radio on the Dash Radio Network, 4 a.m. to 10 a.m. California time, doing the morning show. It's a whole lot of me to deal with, but it is a lot of fun. Ladies and gentlemen, bringing in now uh, one of my, my newish friends. My newest friends from when I moved out here, uh, Mr. Ricky Rackman. Uh, welcome back, sir. Wait, from when you moved to where? Here, to, to L.A. But I don't even live in L.A. I know, <laughs> but I, we didn't meet till I moved out here. So uh, That's true. Yeah, that's true, you know. Um, oh, Joe Regan checking in already. What's going on, buddy? Got people checking in. I like this. I like this. Um so we're going to talk about your new podcast uh, in, in a little bit, but we got to get caught up and see what you've been up to. I know you've been doing the uh, the Ricky's Ride every year. Yeah, this ride was uh, without a doubt the best experience I had in my whole life. But it, when I said it was the last ride and everybody's like, sure it is, I'm like, every day I'm more assured it was. Um, this year, not only did we raise $32,000 for Stop Soldier Suicide with every penny going to them, but we rode 14,600 miles, and I did this entire ride with Leah Vendetta on the back of my motorcycle. Which, and we just, I mean, we just went, we went everywhere. And when, when I tell people, you know, 14,600 miles on a motorcycle, you got to understand if you're going to ride from California to New York, that's, I think, like maybe 4,000. So that's like going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth on a motorcycle. 
yeah. you know, in snow, in rain, in 106 degree heat with nobody, just us. So it was incredible. We raised a lot of money, had a great time, but it just, it, this one, this one I've done, you know, I've done laps around America with Tammy. I've gone coast to coast 12 times on a motorcycle. This one actually took its toll on me. A little bit physically. Well, uh, here's the big question, though. Growing up in uh, in in Los Angeles, um, people out here don't know how to drive in rain. How the hell were you able to drive in snow? Uh, it was vi- well. First of all, if you're thinking like snow, snow, it wasn't snow, snow. It was like <laughs> okay. I'm riding, and it's starting to like. I mean, put it this way: it was like just a, it was enough snow for me to say it snowed, but it didn't really <laughs> stick. Like only one time, like one time I went riding. Me and uh, Chris Kale, who's in the band Five Finger Death Punch, yeah. we were riding through. I don't know where we were riding through. I think it was uh, like Moab or something. And the whole roads there was snow all around us, but the roads were clear. That okay. was great. We were right. Lee and I were riding like in Idlewild and it started to snow like a little bit. But like if there was snow on the road, I'm not. I mean, yeah, I am stupid, but we just go to a hotel. I mean, forget it. <laughs> right, I'm not. Right. It's not like I'm sliding in ice. I just it was enough snow for me to say, hey, it snowed. OK, let's say we rode in snow and then it stopped. Yeah. And if, it, if anybody doesn't recognize that name, uh, Leah, she was on uh, Ink Master. Yeah, she was on season one on the television show Ink Masters. And she was she's been on the cover of like every tattoo magazine. So you get free tattoos now. Eventually, if she's not always, I mean, you would think I got more tattoos. <laughs> I got more tattoos from Leah Vendetta when I was a customer. Oh, really? Because now, the, so, yeah, because when I'm a customer, I'm going there, I'm buying tattoos. Now right. she knows if I'm going to get tattooed by her, that <laughs> I'm not going to pay for it. So right? if there's like a tattoo client that's going to pay her a couple hundred bucks for a tattoo. And I'm like, I'd like something. She's like, yeah, but this person's paying me. So. <laughs> yeah, right. but but she but I am going to get some more tattoos soon. So you uh you knew her before she was on TV then? No, I didn't. Oh. Real real interesting story and I'll be really quick about this. Oh, take as long um, as we want. I was going to be the host of Ink Masters. Oh, wow. And and uh to the point of them saying, "Okay, you know, for people that don't know when you when you audition for certain parts, you know, and if they like you, they say, okay, I'm going to book you from this amount of time. You can't take any jobs for this ca- amount of time to the point of them saying, you can't take any other jobs for this amount of time. We're going to negotiate the deal, blah, 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 blah. So a month, two months pass. And then they say, which I have to be honest, I've heard several times on other jobs. It's between you and Dave Navarro. <laughs> now I've heard that a couple of times. Okay. Whenever it's between you and Dave Navarro, yeah, it's yeah, always yeah, been yeah. like, okay, I get it. So obviously Dave Navarro got the gig. And the problem with Dave Navarro is whenever he gets a job, it's like you couldn't be like a nicer guy. It's right. like if he was a dick, I'd like, fuck Dave Navarro. <laughs> I don't know if I can swear or not. But oh, it's called Dave another Nav- fucking podcast. So. Okay, then I guess I can. Screw that fudging Dave Navarro. Um, <laughs> but I like him. So it's like, you know, but if, if I, I wouldn't have met Leah if I didn't, if I would have been the host. So I didn't know her, but I knew of her. Um, as just a tattoo artist, but that was that I've only known her for probably about three years. Oh, wow. Wow. So you did so see you met her before you moved to North Carolina. No, I moved. To, um, I lived in North Carolina and um, and then I went to Los Angeles to get tattooed by her. And then we sort of got came in contact and then she was tattooing in Florida. Sometimes she'll tattoo in different places. She was tattooing in Florida. Gotcha. So I rode up in the middle of freaking 30 degrees rain for three days, <laughs> like an idiot to not even get a tattoo. She said, it's not a good idea to get your hand tattooed. If you're riding, I'm like, Oh, okay. So then eventually it, you know, blah, blah, blah. Right, right, right. So how you still loving it out there? I know when you first came on the show, it was like almost like right after you moved out there. I do, Izzy. I mean, I miss L.A. I mean, the things that I miss, I, you know, I went to Gilby's birthday party and and Tammy was there. And my friend Keith was there and Gilby and Fred Corey and the people that I that I just love because these are, you know, we're talking about people that have been my friends for, for 35 years. Right. You know, that that and with me, people that are my good friends, I, I hold very, very tight and it was really nice to be with them. And I don't have those type of friends out here and I never will, you right. know. I've got friends out here, but not like I had. So I liked being there. But the truth is, I mean, I'll be honest. I'm sitting in a really nice house by the lake with a boat slip. Come on. Oh, nice. You know, I can't do that in L.A. I couldn't right. afford it. People here say thank you. You know, the southern way of living is different, you know, and they've got good biscuits here. But I oh, do yeah. miss L.A. 
but I'm, 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 I love North Carolina and the money that I, I mean, I can go fly it and I, you know, I'm going back to North, back to LA in March. Oh, nice. You know? Yeah. Nice. Um, yeah, I know exactly what you mean about that, that Southern hospitality. It's like when I, I moved to Tampa for a very short time and like, you know, I stopped in Memphis along the way and I did the whole, you know, the Graceland thing. And then I, I remember I went to um, the birth house and just a nice little old lady that was working, uh, working in the, in the actual birth house, part of the museum. And she's like, I'm like, you can't take pictures behind this little rope she's like oh honey go ahead i'll take it for you just don't tell anybody that i did right right you know and it's like oh this is amazing i miss I that mean, the, the truth the truth is i as, as much as you know i'm dirtbag biker rocker guy i like it when people say thank you i like yeah. it when people treat people right and they do here and you know the thing is north carolina is, is quickly becoming a very popular place to live so that means more hails are coming you know as <laughs> right. soon as i came here i'm like okay nobody else come nobody else come. right well but i like that i you know i like when it gets warm here you know i'm wake surfing on the lake i'm i'm right i can ride my motorcycle in the blue ridge parkway which is the greatest place in america to ride uh-huh uh-huh. So, well, I suppose too. You actually get real thunderstorms there. Eh, not so much. I mean, we get this year was a wet winter. It's and and it's been you know, it, it's you know. I, I'm telling was telling Lee. I'm like Leah. Look, this isn't normal. I mean, I went snowboarding in my backyard. You know, we got some snow. It was gone in a week, but right. You know, it. But yeah, they get some thunderstorms, but primarily it gets a little bit colder in the winter and a little more humid in the summer. And that's about it. But this has been kind of a, a chilly winter, right? Well, how did how how have you adjusted to that? Being from out here, where it's seventy five and sunny almost every now, day? I like it. Now I don't. You know, people don't understand. Like, you know, when you go to L A, so many people are transplants. So many people are from different places, and they say, "Oh yeah, when we used to go back home, when we would do this." It's like, look, my back home is. I delivered scripts on a moped when I was fifteen on the Sunset Strip. Hollywood <laughs> is my home. So it was weird at first, but now I like seasons. I like cold winters and I like warm summers. I like it. Yeah, see, I love the warm summers, but, you know, I'm from Minneapolis. So once you feel that 70 below zero, it's like fucking never again. Not. Okay, I got a question for you. Yeah. How long have you been doing these podcasts? Uh, Five years. Is this the most god awful boring show you've ever had that we spent 20 minutes talking about the weather no absolutely not see okay, I, fi- good. <laughs> I find this intriguing cause, look ricky this is the thing i like to do i don't do any research when i do these things i i like i like having good. the I pure like i like having the pure yeah. conversation because i think and i feel and i think my listeners feel too is like you feel like a, a like a fly on the wall listening to a conversation instead of, you know, cause you know, you've been interviewed how many fucking million times. It's like, you know, you can tell when somebody has a script and they have questions written out and they just go question to question. And there's like no interaction. You are one of the few people that get it. That's exactly what I say. I mean, you know, there's people that I get compared to because I still do interviews. I do interview with certain people. And when people compare me to certain people in this in this field, and I said, I'm not like them. I don't give a rat's ass who produced your record. I don't care about this. I go, I like to have conversations yeah. with people. I, that's what I do. I have conversations. And I do the same thing in NASCAR that, that hopefully I do in rock and roll and and will in some of the future shows that I'm working on. I like to have conversations with people because if you want, you know, I don't think most people really care about that technical bullshit. No, they don't. You get, I mean, if it's specific, like, like three sides of the coin, the, the, the kiss podcast. Yeah. They, they want to hear all that, all the little interest key, interest, of course, everything, of course. but like something that's just a conversation and people having fun. I mean, the, you know, with, with stuff that's interesting, of course, I, I think it's a little bit better when people can just like sit back and relax and feel like they're I in the agree. room with you. You know, I uh, agree. how much, uh, here's a question about that. How much did, did, did you learn that from doing love line? Hmm. Um, I learned a lot. It, it's good that you didn't say from doing headbangers fall because it's true. <laughs> um, I learned a lot of it from Loveline, and then when I left Loveline, I started doing my own show called Ricky Rackman Radio, which was the Triple R, which was a which was very successful talk radio show in Los Angeles in the talk radio market. You know, when you do radio, the the biggest time is morning drive and afternoon drive. Yep. And on the station I was on, they had Howard Stern in the morning and oh, me wow. in the afternoon. So so that's when I really learned it. And when I was doing talk radio five days a week. 
And Loveline, yeah. I mean, I listened to some old Loveline shows the other day, and I was like, my God, I just don't shut up. You know? <laughs> and I cut people off. I mean, sometimes I, I hear criticism that people have given me on Headbangers Ball, and then I watch the interviews, I'm like, oh, my God, they're right. You know, that I did talk a lot, but that, that was just, you know, I didn't grow up being a journalist with a microphone at the club waiting to talk to somebody about their new records. Right. I grew up being the guy that didn't make it in a band. So I had the club, you know, I can't tell you who produced, you know, UFO's album, but I can tell you what happened when me and Slash woke up in the gutter when we were <laughs> right? kids, you know, it's right, like right. stuff like that. That's that's who I am. You know, I like to tell stories and have conversations. Right. And but yeah, I think Love Line I think Love Line really did put me on the radio enough nights that I just had to kind of stop and listen and deal with whatever the next call was gonna be. Right, right, right. Did do you have any memories uh, like specific call memories? On anything Love that, Line? Yeah, anything that, that sticks out? Uh, yeah, one time, and let's see how we can see this, even though you're allowed to swear on, oh no, that, that, oh no, okay. Um, you're allowed to swear on your show, but I'm still trying to think of how to word this politely. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. How do, I believe there's the term when air comes out of a woman's, um, uh, a queef thing. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So one time we were, that became the topic on love line and i the band and um the band hagfish uh zach who's now in the band rise against and we were just they were getting girls to do that on the phone and it was just <laughs> it was one oh oh no 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 without a doubt i know what the most talked about love line episode was without a doubt people remember like you know oh what was the most talked about headbangers ball what was the most the without a doubt the most talked about episode of love line was when Fletcher from Pennywise threw up on Dr. Drew and the story that people don't even know about it. And I, I mean, I don't talk to Drew anymore, but I knew it was going to happen. They told me it was going to happen. Fletcher and them, they told me side and he said, Fletcher's going to throw up on Dr. Drew. And he threw up across the board and threw up on Dr. Oh Drew. Oh my God. Uh, pardon me. That that's is radio a, gold right there. Right, boy. right, right. So it was planned. Sort of. And do you, do, you, do you know what Fletcher from Pennywise looks like? Uh, no, but I am going to Google him right okay. now. Fletcher is a, put it this way, Fletcher out Zach Wilds, Zach. Okay? <laughs> oh, Jesus. He is just like a big, gnarly looking, bi even though he's not like biker dude, he's a, look for Fletcher in Pennywise. He's a big motherfucker. He's a, and he's a scary. I love him. I love him to death. He's a sweet guy, but he's just a. He's probably one of the gnarlier looking guys, almost a Chuck Billy kind of guy, but with a like a long hair beard guy in a punk rock band. Right. See, all I'm seeing now is uh, goatee, and so he must have cut all that shit off then. Fletcher. This yeah. was a long time ago. Yeah, a long time long ago. Hair. I haven't yeah. seen him for a while. Yeah, I'm seeing short hair and a goatee. I want to see no. old pictures. God. Well, he's, a, he's a big guy. He is a big guy. Yes, yes, yes absolutely, absolutely. No. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, you, you said you haven't talked to Drew in a long time. Is that uh... – No, I haven't. I, I love Dr. Drew. I haven't talk and, talked to him in a long time. Um, I would – I actually signed up for Adam Carolla's podcast class and paid for it and didn't even tell him that I did it and watched it for like three minutes. And I just, oh, screw it. I'm just going to do it by myself and see if I figure <laughs> out how to do it and just see what happens. And then uh, and that's kind of what I did. But uh, yeah, I haven't talked to Drew for a while, but it's not like me and Drew are not friends. I mean, I would right. love to reach out to Dr. Drew because I think the world of him. Right. No, there's a lot of conflicting things about what happened when you left Love. I know we're going to talk, we're going we're gonna to talk about your podcast in a little bit here, but it's okay. just questions that I have during this conversation. Okay. You know, that's yeah, a lot of people were surprised because when I hosted Love Line, and this is something that nobody can deny. When I started Love Line, there was a host, Poor Man. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the show was very popular in LA. When I started, even though the show was on like 13 years, I started hosting it. And in no time, it became syndicated nationally. It got a 19 share. If anybody knows anything in radio, 19 share is absolutely ridiculous. You right. can't top that. It was the highest rating that radio show ever got. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm doing Loveline, having the time of my life. What I did not realize 
was it was the easiest job I ever had. I go in there, I listen to kids talk about sex and give stupid advice while I'm with Dr. Drew, who I, who I, who I think is great. Okay. I was approached to do the Loveline TV show which I didn't really like the idea very much. Mm -hmm. And so then they said, well, let's put Adam Carolla in. And Adam Carolla did the TV show with Drew. And then they said, well, let's put Adam Carolla on the radio show as well. So it was Dr. Drew, Adam Carolla, and myself. Um, It wasn't really working. And I said, you know what? I want to do something other than just have 13-year-old kids talk about masturbation. And I decided to leave and start my own show, Ricky Rackman okay. Radio. Whether that was a good idea or not, I don't know. I didn't really want to do the TV show. The TV show I don't think worked. Right. But um, I think Adam Carolla was great. I think Dr. Drew is great. I, I have nothing bad to say about a- either of those guys. But I left, and a lot of people thought it was a pretty ballsy move to leave a nationally syndicated radio show to start my own mm-hmm. talk radio show. But I'm glad I did. So there was no at no point where you felt like you were forced out. You were just kind of Mm-mm. all right. It's time for me no, to but I, but I don't know if they if they weren't. I was never forced out. It was my decision to leave. But I think they kind of weren't weren't like no, Ricky, don't go. Right, right. They like right. really wanted to work on this Doctor Drew Adam thing because they wanted it to work for the TV show. Right. Um. Yeah. I mean, but it worked. I mean, look, I, I became obviously aware of Love Line when you were on it, because that's the first time that I heard it, because it had just become syndicated. You know, um, I just I went through the changes. It is yeah. what it is. Um, so I, I have been listening. I listened to your two episodes of your podcast. Uh, the first one was uh, you've was, listened to every one, every one. Yes. Yes. Not many people can say that about mine. <laughs> <laughs> or want to or want to admit it but um but yeah i like this premise um that you're just kind of telling stories that, that really haven't been told um this is what it uh, this is what it is and and i i, I started something that i'm going to tell you that i'm going to tell you that like i've decided is either the most brilliant thing or the stupidest thing i've ever done but i i'm going with it as far as the podcast the podcast is cat house hollywood stories the thing is, you know, I'll wake up in the middle of the night and have a vision. I want it to be this way, and then I change it, and then the next day I might think of something else. So it really is like a disaster piece in progress. <laughs> don't know exactly where it's going, but I have ideas. And uh, the problem is my, you know, I, it's not going to be interviews. It's going to be people telling stories. But what I don't want people to think it's going to be just every rock star, rock star, rock star, because sometimes there won't be rock stars. Sometimes there will be people like that. Why episode two is how I met Tammy. Right. And when I tell these stories, the show is obviously it's produced. It's got audio clips. And I want to take people back to that time. I want them to know what was going on. You know, people always say, you know, how did you even meet Tammy? And I was like, well. I was a club DJ. I wasn't really that much in the rock scene back then. And yeah. and we kind of go into how that thing and, and tell the story because, you know, people can say whatever they want about Headbangers Ball or they hate me or like me or that's fine. But the Cat House was the greatest rock and roll club in the world. No, no two way about it. And uh, and there's some great stories and some of them are very decadent and some of them aren't. And you know, I'm working on episode three right now, and some of the people that are in it all of a sudden don't want to talk about it. So episode three might be just telling the story the way I remember it. Okay, you know, which is not what I want, but uh, there's some there's some great. I mean, there are so many stories, and I'm going to go to L.A. in March, and I'm going to get all these people to tell the stories, and I'm going to get, you know, I'm uh, I mean, I, I could, there's so many stories I can't even begin to tell you of things that you're not going to believe actually happened at the cat house. And it was a community back then when every band knew everybody and we were all friends and we used to all help each other and we'd have barbecues and softball games. I mean, I'm serious. Barbecues yeah, yeah. and softball games and all this crazy shit. But then, you know, somebody would OD and mm-hmm. then, you know, it would, then all of a sudden you're watching your friends. Everybody's getting record pretty much in my circle of friends Everybody got a record deal but me. And then the only person that like didn't get the record deal was Gilby, who was working at Madame Wong's. And mm-hmm. then it's like, Gilby just got the gig in Guns N' Roses. I'm like, okay, <laughs> now everybody's got a record deal but me. How, so how did Cat you, House was my baby. How, how did you deal with that, with all your friends and you being a musician yourself? Everybody's getting record deals and you're just kind of left out on the outside. Well, I, the, the thing is, everybody else was 
good. That was the other thing. <laughs> okay. I wasn't. It wasn't like, like yeah, I, I wanted. I mean, I still, I'm not going to lie. I still go to a concert and I wish I was on stage. But, you know, I also wish that I was racing the Daytona 500. And right, there's right. probably a better chance of that. <laughs> right, um, right. So it, it was, I was living, I was, and this sounds so egotistical, but I was the rock star that wasn't in a band. You know, because I had the cat house and the cat house got me notoriety. I mean, that's they wanted Ricky Rackman from the cat house to host Headbangers Ball. So it was interesting to watch everybody get signed and get record deals. But it was also really cool that I was I was like Forrest Gump, that I was just there in the right place in the right time watching everybody get huge. And then all of a sudden I'm the guy on Headbangers Ball and I'm friends and and working with the people that were already huge you know when i went to when i first started working for headbangers and they send me to donnington to monsters of rock and i go to interview aerosmith and they know who i am i mean i'm like okay this doesn't make sense how does this guy already know who i that's that's you know it's a surreal feeling it really is it really is and i have that and i'll give you an example recently that happened when i got to meet stone cold steve austin that I walked into a room and I'm like, oh my God, I get to meet Stone Cold Steve Austin. I'm so right. excited to meet Stone Cold Steve Austin. So I walk in there and I'm like, hey, and he's like, Ricky Rackman, I live Pantera and this and that. I'm like, okay. Well, God Stone damn it, Cold son. Steve Austin knows who I am. Yeah. You know, when you meet people that are your that are people that you look up to, which is the same thing that happened even when I met Dale Earnhardt Jr. before he was like a big superstar. Mm-hmm. I, of course, knew who he, who he was, but he knew who I was because I used to wear his dad's shirts on MTV. And, and it's like when you meet people that know who you are, that are people that are famous, it's just like – because, you know, I, 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 I kind of have made these – teeny needle bit of fame of really not of just talking to people that are famous you know Mm -hmm. like i say on my twitter profile it's like you know i can't drive a race car and i can't play in a rock band but i can make a living talking to people that do and that's that's what i've pretty much done i'm just i'm just the big wannabe i want to be all those things but have made a pretty good living through my career doing that kind of stuff and uh finding different niches to get into and finding ways to capitalize on it and both of us are kind of alike in that way because I'm kind of on the outside the same way. But, you know, but it's funny. I have a Stone Cold Steve Austin story, too. Um, I was with uh, I took Don Jameson over to do uh, Stone Cold's podcast. Um, so I was at Stone Cold's house and we're sitting there. We're bullshitting afterwards. And Steve looks at us. He's like, God damn it. I don't want to ruin my rep with you guys because I love Pantera and I love all the metal. But God damn it. I love Firehouse. And me and Don are just like. <laughs> Dude, those are our bros, you know? That's funny. That's so great. Stone Cold's a great guy. He really was is. So, I was so happy. That was just, I mean, there's those there's those instances when I got to meet people that were like, you know, way up there. And, yeah. And it, that, that's just so cool because I am a fan. That's why you will never, ever, ever hear me say my fan i will never talk to people like oh ricky rackman's fan maybe not because i don't have any but because <laughs> i've never referred to people as fans because uh, it just doesn't fit right for me it's just like look i'm just like everybody else i just got a microphone sometimes you know yeah i just i i listen to, it's like people are i i think they're they're listeners i i don't feel like fans i i don't i don't understand I, I don't know what that feels like you know what i mean right right yeah. So let me tell you what I did with my podcast. First of all, oh, please. the podcast is doing extremely well. Uh, very, very surprising. I'm doing it all myself. I'm not on a network. I don't have anything. You know, I don't have any of these networks or advertisers. And and, and I did that purposely because, you know, my rides have been I've, – I've, Cat House has been sponsored by Monster Energy Drink. I've got Death Wish Coffee, Lot Tiger Sauce. I've got Hot Leathers. I've got all these sponsors that I've worked with, right? Mm-hmm. It's really easy for me to go out and get a sponsor. But I wanted to do this – just without any ads. And then I decided um, today, I decided after episode two, I said, okay, if anybody wants to buy an ad, I'm going to put in a 30 second spot on eBay and you can do whatever you want. You can tell this girl that you're sorry. You can get me to read the ad. You can read the ad. It can be for whatever you want. It could be like, you know, Hey, my name is Joe and I'll pick up dog crap in your house. Or maybe you're a plumber or maybe you want me to play your demo. You can buy a 30 second, 40 second spot on cat house hollywood's podcast and 
so as I did that, I do a thing after the podcast, I do a chat where everybody like contributes and people loved it. They can't wait to hear who's going to be the one that's going to bid the highest to oh, buy an amazing. ad on my packet. And I, and even better than that, it's up to $76. So I'm Holy like, shit. Yee. Nice. Bucks. Nice. Are, are, is that like, is it going to like a charity thing or is that just, absolutely uh, not? Add a kid. Right to me. Let me tell you something. You're not going to find anybody that's raised more money for various charities than I did. Ricky's ride raised. How much did we raise, Leah? We raised thirty two thousand dollars, and the ride cost me in excess of twenty thousand dollars. Damn! I paid the hotels and the gas and everything out of my own pocket. Okay, all that money went to stop soldier suicide. That's fine. I raised all that money for Claire Wineland's foundation. I'm so happy I did it. Any money that I'm going to raise, I'm going to start raising some money for me because you know what? I'm getting older, and I want some things. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. And you know what? And so and so. So right now, I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to spend this $76, but you never know. It could get into the triple digits and, and maybe about $100 for a spot on Ricky on the Cat House Hollywood podcast. And actually, to be honest, the Cat House Hollywood podcast is doing re- – like I don't know how the charts work, but it entered at 21 on Apple iTunes, which I guess is really good. Yeah, that's really but, good. But that was the first one. I don't even know what the second one did. But, um, I mean, for all I know, somebody might end up, you know, a real company might actually outbid somebody and then I'll mm-hmm. figure out what to do through there. But in the meantime, you could buy it. It's $76 so far. I so had, never know. I had this brilliant idea and I'm going to tell you this before I go to break. Um, I had this brilliant idea that when that, when that, um, when the, when the lottery is up, up around like a little over $1 billion, I'm like, if I win this, I am going to buy a Super Bowl ad. For my podcast, and all it's going to be is me sitting at a pool with hot chicks in the pool, sipping on a drink with a bulldog sitting next to me, and it just comes right up to me with the middle finger up going, am I rich enough for you now, bitch? (laughs) And then another effing podcast. I thought it would have been brilliant. Uh, Ricky, we're going to take a short little break here. We'll come back. We'll talk more about the podcast. We're going to talk more about your story. Uh, maybe take some listener questions. We've got some people piling in the chat room oh, here. Um, but before we do that, I want to tell everybody about Beater Amplification, ladies and gentlemen. B-E-E-T-E-R. These guys are fucking amazing. I am proud to be their artist. And uh, 100 watts of testicular fortitude, three channels. You get that old school Metallica tone, old school ACDC tone to that old school clean fender tone, hand wired, hand built, 100 watts of power, pull two tubes, and you got yourself a 50. These things are goddamn amazing. Check them out, beateramplification.com. That is two E's. And we'll be right back with more another effing podcast with Ricky Rackman. Hold tight. RockstarLeatherworks.com is your home for badass rock and roll gear. Featuring 100% handmade leather bands, watches, cuffs, bracelets, and more, Rockstar Leatherworks has something for everybody. Whether you are going to the show or you are in it, you can find something to fit your needs. Choose from a variety of designs or create your own masterpiece. Their bands and watches are second to none. They also ship internationally. Who needs a stage to be a rock star? Check out RockstarLeatherworks.com. If you need to promote your band or business, or just want to stylize, personalize, or customize your ride, check out vid-decals.com. Want to create and customize your own stickers representing your band, or make your own bumper sticker? Vid Decals can do it. All stickers are printed on quality vinyl and can be placed on any flat surface. Stickers are an affordable way to promote your band or business. Go to vid-decals.com to get started. That's vid-decals.com. Vid-decals.com. Retro Arcade brings Minnesota and surrounding areas arcade games from the days gone by. All of those great games from pizza joints and arcades are available in cocktail units and custom machines. Dozens of favorites from your youth in one machine to complete your game room or man cave. Retro Arcade also sells and services your favorite pinball machines. Find them at Facebook.com slash 80 Arcade. That's Facebook.com slash 80 Arcade. Retro Arcade. Your youth is just one click away. Hey ladies, Sass Pants Designs will take that rock shirt that everyone has and make it your own in a flattering, sassy, and simple way. There are one-of-a-kind tank tops, lace-up tees, and tube top dresses already in stock. Check out the online store at sasspantsdesigns.com and like Sass Pants Designs on Facebook for special offers and custom orders. 
That's sasspantsdesigns.com. Sasspantsdesigns.com. Sasspants will make you the envy of the party. Rockstarleatherworks.com is your home for badass rock and roll gear. Featuring 100% handmade leather bands, watches, cuffs, bracelets, and more, Rockstar Leatherworks has something for everybody. Whether you are going to the show or you are in it, you can find something to fit your needs. Choose from a variety of designs or create your own masterpiece. Their bands and watches are second to none. They also ship internationally. Who needs a stage to be a rock star? Check out rockstarleatherworks.com. Hey, what's going on? This is Tom Arnold. I like uh, fat women and cocaine. And you're listening to Izzy Presley here on another uh, fucking podcast. And uh, I know Izzy uh, from uh, Cocaine Anonymous, Anonymous meetings. meetings. I've actually uh, seen him at the meetings with uh, uh, Ace uh, Johnson from, uh, fa- I probably shouldn't say this out loud, but Ace has got a bad coke problem. And uh, his sponsor <laughs> is uh, is uh, Josh Todd from, and again, I shouldn't say this out loud, but Josh is his sponsor from Buck Cherry. He's addicted to upskirt porn. And, uh, and they're both being sponsored by the Eagles. Uh, the whole band, the Eagles. There's, anyways, uh, another fucking podcast right here with Izzy Presley, and uh, call your sponsor, fucking A. It's fucking great, Craig Gas. Everybody, it's so good. I know he really. I mean, I, I hate impersonators, right? Right. But he is so good. Oh, he's he spot really on. He is, dude. His Kinnison, you cannot tell the difference at all. It is scary. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it, I mean that's that's another thing. Like, which uh, one day when the Cat House Hollywood podcast, you know, when when we run out of stories to tell, we got to talk about what it was like in Hollywood on Monday nights. We would all go to the comedy store, and Sam Kennison would get up, and you never knew who would get up. But Kennison and Dice would get up almost every Monday night, and it was free, and all the bands we'd all be there, and that's where we'd all hang out Monday nights. Like Monday we'd go there, Tuesday we'd go to Cat House, Thursday Bordello. And Sunday Camp Hollywood, you know, and there were all these places that we go to. And Monday, we was we, I mean, we'd see Kennison like once a week. That was part of our scene back then. Did you ever end up at a Sam Kennison party where he wouldn't let anybody leave? No. Oh, uh, I've, I've, I heard somebody. I was listening to a podcast last night. It was, it was telling stories about this, but Sam Kennison, and like he would have these these parties, but Sam was so hardcore that he just kept ordering more drugs and booze and would not let anybody leave for like two days. Well, I stopped doing drugs in 1988. Okay. So so when I stopped doing all that stuff, I did my best to stay away from those type of situations. Gotcha. Gotcha. I mean, it's still hard. For, I still don't like looking at people doing cocaine. I can't mm-hmm. see that. You know, people drinking. I mean, all my friends, well, most of them used to. They, I guess not all my friends do drink anymore. But, um, but you know, I don't mind. I'm always the first one to buy drinks. You know, right. I, I like buying drinks for people, but I just I can't be around people doing doing blow. It, it's weird because it's L.A. It's like everywhere. I mean, it's yeah. fucking everywhere. It's oh, like yeah. oh, yeah. the joke is you could, you know, even though they remodeled the bathrooms at the Rainbow, you can kick the wall and cocaine will float down like snow <laughs> you know? right right um oh god we got people checking in here we got a uh, scotty checking in from the great white north take off uh bruce checking in from the great white north says good day a eh? uh mark checking in from chicago christy lee how you doing gunter he's my guy with the uh with the decals um uh, scotty said i love hearing the experiences it gives us insight into that world and not just some script thank you guys no thank you scotty thank you um so the, the one thing that i i took from that from the second episode of the podcast which just came out today correct yes it is it's on itunes and it eventually will be at other places i just don't know how it works yet right um i know it's on cat house hollywood website too i don't know if that what i don't understand what i don't understand the differences between listens and downloads and subscriptions or anything but it's just there it's yeah somewhere. um then you can you kind of talked about it earlier too is that you didn't uh you weren't really in the rock scene before before you met tammy and started up the cat in house. the early where i came from my background and i've said this in so many interviews and and and, and people just don't really sort of choose to remember it i came my background is punk rock yeah 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 i knew that's that. where yeah. my background was with the black flag germs adolescence tsol all that stuff and then i got i was still i, I loved rock and roll i still did i mean in in my book the ramones i mean not the ramones motorhead was a punk rock band i yeah. always thought as motorhead is a punk rock band i mean before that it was it was all about ted nugent and it was about 
pretty much just Ted Nugent. I loved Ted Nugent when I was a kid. Uh, Ted Nugent and Alice Cooper. When I was a kid, kid, it was Ted Nugent and Alice Cooper. As I got older, I realized how brilliant Alice Cooper is and how brilliant Ted Nugent isn't. But um, <laughs> so uh, then I was in punk rock, and then I, I then I had like my rockabilly phase and like everything. But the beauty of early '80s rock and roll, especially in the Cat House scene is a lot of these people came from punk rock. So, yeah, yeah. you know, a lot of the people, you know, Duff was in punk rock bands and and it even says in episode two how, you know, me and Izzy would hang out and talk about punk rock and stuff like that. And even though I liked rock and roll, um, I had met Gilby Clark and Ryan Roxy. I auditioned to sing for the band Candy. And I knew his friends with Ryan Roxy, who's now Alice Cooper's guitarist. And me and Ryan were buddies, but I didn't really have that many friends that were in the rock scene in 1985. So kind of going in there, you know, I was just kind of getting into that scene a little bit. But um, even though we were into rock and roll and the three friends that I had, and we all had long hair, but we weren't like in the rock scene, you know, we couldn't get into the clubs and stuff like that. And then I kind of got that gig around that same time. I got the job as uh, the DJ for Tommy and Heather's wedding and became yeah. friends with Nikki Six. And um, then I met Tammy, and then as me and Tammy became friends, that kind of intertwined in the whole scene. So I guess I would be late into the as far as being a member of the Hollywood rock scene. What, was it a so was it a bigger deal for you meeting Heather Locklear than it was Motley Crue? No. Okay. I lo- <laughs> well. Okay. Yes. When when Heather and Tommy came in, uh, I was a hardcore Motley Crue fan. I was such a fucking Motley Crue fan that even though I had my milk crates filled with records and dance music, I had, uh, I think that might have been right before Theater of Pain came out or okay. right when Theater of Pain came out because I had the album in my records. So even though I played dance music, I had Theater of Pain in there. And so when Tommy came there, I was like, okay, here comes like the drummer of like the fucking coolest rock and roll band in the world with the best looking chick in America. Like they were like America's couple. They were like – yep the hottest you know and so then they're there and and there's more to the story that i didn't tell in the podcast that i will tell eventually but they were dancing and then tommy came up here came up and they hung out with me and that was like a surreal moment because yeah. i was scratching and doing all this stuff and then i remember going to tommy lee's house and heather locklear answered the door and i was like holy crap heather locklear is like she looks like heather locklear right. you know it was just like it was like because when you're young in that day that was it you know, she yeah. was like, that, that was it. You know, now there's yeah. just so many stupid girls on social media that's like the so-called hottest chick. I don't even know who they are now. Mm-hmm. But in the early 80s, it was Heather. You know? Well, it, there was always that fight. Was it Heather Locklear or Heather Thomas? Cause it both, was Heather Locklear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Bruce wants to know, uh, where's the book? Have you ever thought about doing a book? A million, I get asked that all the time, which is flattering that I get asked that all the time. But... The podcast is a book. Okay. I mean, Cat House Hollywood. I'm telling the Cat House Hollywood stories. And then there's going to be a podcast called One Foot in the Gutter. And it's going to be gritty. The thing is, there's been a lot of people that have been asked me to do a book. And I even went to UCLA and took writing. And I can write. But I have a hard time staying focused. And if the right deal comes up, there will be a book. But it's not going to be the stupid rock and roll tell-all. It's going to be about drugs and porn and rock and roll and the seedy stuff and 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 good and bad and 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 it's going to be dark because it's got to be yeah well, and, uh, and i'd like to do that but if it, if it is done it's going to be done the right way well, it's not going to be like hi i wrote the book on kevin dubrow and now let's do a book about you riggy right right like well that. let me ask you this uh, has there ever been an idea about doing a movie about the cat house yes yes uh somebody pitched a movie about the cat house and they even signed the check and wrote the check. And then they decided, which I guess I can talk about it now, that it was going to be a television series, that it was going to be called a docu-series. And the way they were looking at it was to be like Entourage. And it was going to be um, it was going to be done for VH1. And like uh, 
like the one guy, I don't remember which character was in Entourage, all, how, his, how he had famous friends and he was like the manager. I was the one guy and all my friends were famous. So it was going to be like an Entourage and it was going to be at the cat house. And it was, and every, and I mean, they paid me, the, the, they, they developed a script that was okay, uh-huh. but, um, but it was still interesting. And then what happened is they put out one TV show that was a show that was Tori Spelling show. There was a scripted show by Tori Spelling. Which, in all honesty, was really funny, uh-huh. and uh, and so they were decided we're going to do some real sc- we're going to do a scripted docu series about the cat house, and then this thing called reality TV came, and all the budgets were wiped clean, and they just started doing reality, reality, and I'm not going to talk shit about reality because I did three or four of the shows myself, <laughs> right. but it just it got rid of all scripted TV show, all everything. Yeah. So, so there was talk. I mean, right now, I think it makes all the sense in the world. You know, when I went to the premiere, you know, I hosted the premiere of Rock of Ages. And when I saw that movie, I did everything I could to stop from walking out. Right. Because it was just so offensive. And there needs to be a movie. And I hope there is. I mean, I'd love to do a Vegas show with dancing and with a script and with the real bands playing and yeah. stuff like that. I mean, there's there's things that can be done that I really do want to do. And, you know, now is the time to do it because I'm getting older. You know, right, and I'm right. still having fun. So you never know. I think that hopefully putting this Cat House podcast out there is, is stoking the fires. But that's not why I'm doing it. I'm not doing it because I'm hoping to get another gig. Right. I'm doing it because I want this to be really cool and I want people to really like it. And even though, you know, yeah, we have our advertising off an eBay ad, but, um, <laughs> you know, I'm just really hoping that people dig this. I mean, yeah, if somebody gave me a thousand dollars for an ad or 2000, that'd be good, but that money would be gone. But if right. all of a sudden 500 people are saying like, they really like the cat house stories, that feels really good. Like right. when people buy cat house shirts and they still buy cat house shirts, when I have people one. buy cat house shirts. That makes me feel really good. It really, really does because that's – and I don't care if they bought it because of Axe Award and the Paradise City video or because of they love Faster Pussycat. I don't care, but they bought it, and that makes me feel really good because Cat House is my baby. Cat House – I'm you know, when people say, what are you the most proud of in your entire career, it is without a doubt Cat House. Was there at any point where you just wanted to like – Put it in your past and just say, all right, it, that part of my life is over. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that's also why I'm not the one that's hosting a lot of concerts or doing any radio on Sirius because I said, OK, this is ending right now. I'm going to try to see what else I can do. And I went into talk radio. And then because I love NASCAR, I decided I was going to find a way to work in NASCAR and I did. And my radio show has been on 16 years and you know, I'm, I live in race city, USA and uh, you know, but I, but because I wasn't working in rock and roll doesn't mean that I wasn't in rock and roll. That's like saying every other person that just listens to metal all the time. Well, they don't work in it. So they're not really metal. It's just just because I wasn't working in it. There are things that I, that I, I would is he I'd be lying to you if, if I said that I don't get bitter sometimes that somebody doesn't even ask me to do some of these things, you know, that I'm like, well, why the fuck have I never been invited to the golden gods? Right. You know, right. like that sort of is kind of kind of and I and I, I I'm probably an idiot saying that. You no, know? you're not. I but, do. But so, but sometimes I keep on thinking I'm like, you know, hey, I'm damn good on radio. Why is it that I'm not the guy? Is it? You know, and I know that I piss a lot of people off because of my opinions and that's okay. Mm -hmm. But, you know, sometimes I wonder, and there's a lot of festivals that I would not do no matter what, it doesn't matter what they pay me because for me to go up there and introduce some of these shit bands doesn't make sense. Right. You know, if I go up there and I tell people, you know, Hey, here's faster pussycat or lamb of God or junkyard or LA guns or slay. It's because I like that. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I like that. I can't go up there and say, here's the latest one from some every fucking band. You know, you, some of these people do every single show. Yeah. And I don't even know why, but whatever. Dude, I, 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 I'm, and I'm the exact same way, even though I'm kind of pretty much a nobody. It's like, but, you know, you know I can do the mornings on the Monsters, Monsters of Rock radio where we're heard, heard by over a million people a fucking week. And... Mm-hmm. It's like I still get that same feeling too. It's like, well, why aren't I out there doing that? Or why am I? Well, why are they not calling me for that? And but then again, I have to remember that I'm still nobody. <laughs> you know, 
but but what do people want? You know, I mean, I I I think that we've we've got a guy like Jose, who's a rock guy. You know, uh-huh. I like Jose Magnin a lot because he is a rock guy. You know, and and I like seeing him. If there is somebody carrying the flag and waving it, that's good because I I like him. He's a good dude. Yeah. But I I don't get a lot of stuff, and I can be pissed, and people would think that it's bitter, or I can just say, you know. I've ridden a motorcycle further than anybody. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know, well, there you go. look, my, mine's all bitterness and jealousy. So <laughs> there you go. I'm kidding, right. of course. Uh, Zach checking in from Minneapolis wants to know, uh, I want to hear about dating Janine. <laughs> <laughs> Lee Evan did it sitting in the same room as me right now. Oh yeah. Been? Okay. Okay. So we'll uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll save. That no, you know, I, I have I have nothing. I have no, it was it was it was a very high point in my life. No, 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 honey, stay, 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 <laughs> stay, Leah, <laughs> Leah, stay. It was yeah, it was yeah, a very yeah, high yeah. point, and there was a lot of dark parts, and it was very very interesting, and um, it is something that I will talk about eventually, but. Okay. It's, uh, it was, it was, it was interesting. It was, it was a very, it was some, a lot of highs and there were a lot of lows and brought on by both parties. It was, it got to be very dark at times, you know? Right. Right. Well, uh, let's take a, a chance to talk about, uh, John Palumbo design. I love me some John Palumbo design. He, uh, designed stuff. You need a website, you need a graphics, you need anything done. Hit up John Palumbo design. Also hit up a and productions, laser engraving division. Ricky, these guys can laser engrave anything. They've even laser engraved a goddamn hot dog bun. This is how good they are. Hit them up. AP lasers dot com. Uh, Oh, we got some more people checking in. Uh, uh, Justin, first time listener, really cool stories. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. So welcome everybody. Um, do you still have your skateboard company? No. Um, what happened? That was another thing. I mean, everything that I've ever done is pretty much like you could say, Oh, why does he do that? Why does he do that? It's because it's fun. Yeah. When I started the skateboard company. I came from an old school skateboard background and I figured, you know what? I want to make old school skateboards with the wide you know, tails and stuff like that. So I started a skateboard company called pool school and I had Steve Godoy, who's a great old school skater. And I, I sponsored like the guys in JFA and stuff like that. And it was really great. And I had this, and I started having them made by this company vision. And there was this guy that owned vision skateboard. I think his name was Brad Dorfman or something. He owned vision skateboard. It's a big company and they're making the boards. And one day I walked in there to watch him make the boards. And he's like, you can't just walk in here like this. Who the hell do you think you are? You can't just, and I was like, excuse me. And he was just like, like a total asshole. Uh-huh. And I was just like, and at that point I just said, I don't need this. So I just stopped doing it. Okay. But we sold them everywhere and it was really good. And I got a cease and desist from Krispy Kreme because I ripped off their logo. Oh. And, uh, and it was really fun. I made free skateboards and I got to come in there. And and, and then um, Dogtown ended up making this. The company was called Pool School. And then Dogtown ended up making Pool School skateboards. Okay. Not mine. Right, just, right took the name <laughs> oh i just got a tweet from uh, ace von johnson i have so many questions i i don't know who that is, is that <laughs> <Kiss>? <laughs> uh, I, there is not a person seriously there is not a person i believe that sleeps less than him oh i know it's like he's always up always it's like i get done working at five o'clock in the morning i'll see him tweeting it's like dude you, you were up at 10 o'clock in the morning what? Come back here, Leah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he can. I love. I, if I, I would love nothing more than to go out there and record a record with him. Because, oh, dude! Because that kid knows. Thank you, hon. That kid knows. Like he listens to the same music that I listen to, and like you know, when we'll get out there and play, and I'll say, you know, I mean, I always throw the example of the Avengers, American, because a lot of people don't know the Avengers, mm-hmm. and he did. And uh, he's really talented, and he's a he's a great dude. I think he's no, he a little is. bit too sensitive, and he needs to get freaking backhanded sometime. But I mean, he uh, in my tiny handful of friends, he would be one of my best friends too. Right, uh, Scotty checking in. Uh, one of my favorite monsters of Rock Cruise memories was the morning after the epic pool stage show by Faster Pussycat. I get in the elevator, and there's Ricky and Tammy looking ready to face the day. Meanwhile, I was on, I was a hungover piece of garbage. All right, there all you I know go. is that, that when we did the cat house. 
It was the first when we did the Cat House on the Monsters of Rock cruise, which was a fucking debacle. But when we did it, it was the first time that there was ever a cat fight on a Monsters of Rock cruise. And I'm just glad that that I came there. We had a bunch of girls getting a big fight. Yep. Which, uh, if you didn't know, fighting on a cruise ship is really, really bad. You get yes. in a lot of trouble. <laughs> oh yes, I had to talk to I don't know what Captain Steubing, whatever his name was, and I had to <laughs> go talk to like authorities and everything about these girls that that I was on stage watching these girls just pull each other's hair out. And it was at the cat house, and I was like, well, if it's going to happen. I remember the guy, Larry or whatever, came up, and he's like, you know, we've been doing the cat, we've been doing these cruises for so many years, and there's never been a fight happen at the cat house, a fight at, on the cruise. Right. And you do the cat house here one night, and a couple of chicks fight, and I'm like, that's right. <laughs> like, I, like, I was like, I was, I was, I mean, even though it's wrong, right. I was still happy. Well, right. Of course, everybody likes to see a cat fight, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, not sometimes, but but if it's gonna happen, let it happen at the cat house. You know, we want to, we want. It's it's hard for us to, in, it, at this age. It's hard for us to find things that still make us notorious. So no, let I that get be it. it. Absolutely, let that uh, be it. Uh, Ricky. Uh, people want to find you. Uh, social media. Um, where can they? Uh, where can they look for you? I'm on the Twitter and the Facebook at Ricky Rackman, which is R I K I R A C H T M A N. And, uh, you know, I'm talking a lot about the Cat House Hollywood podcast, which you can find. It's Cat House Hollywood. And if you want to be the advertiser on the next show, just go bid on it on eBay. It can be anything. You, I can apologize to your girlfriend for you it, or propose or I can talk about your band. But, you know, as long as it's something I believe in, like there's certain advertisers I won't accept no matter how much. Right, but, right. Um, but yeah, but it's goofy. It's stupid, but it's, I'm really enjoying the cat house Hollywood podcast. That's awesome. I am too. And, it's, and it's, thank you. Thank you. Izzy. And, um, yeah, I've been having, I've had a good time today and, uh, yeah, this is fun. Let me ask you this before you go, where did, where did you get Ricky from? Cause that's not your real name. No, my real name is David. My real name is David. Uh, despite, just so you know, if you guys look on Wikipedia, there's my birthday's wrong, my name is wrong, and the women that I've dated. I, okay, I don't understand where this came from, but in so many websites, it says that I dated Tracy Lords. I never dated Tracy. Everywhere you look, it says I dated Tracy Lords, and I never dated Tracy Lords. I don't know where that came from. But, um, Ricky, I changed my, my stepbrother's name was David. Okay. And I changed it. When I was about 12 years old, and I think it was Rick for a while, and then I changed it to Ricky, and I just started changing my name. And then I went to New Zealand for a year, so when I came back on all my school records, I just changed it to Ricky. I really could not tell you when it went to R-I-K-I, but what a stupid way to phonetically spell it. It's like, <laughs> like that's 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 actually Ricky, like Tiki. Right. Like, I don't, like, nobody spells your name R-I-K-I, That's except, like, there's some Japanese comic book character and like a chick it's like so i don't know when it became ricky r.i i really have no idea when it came ricky r.i.k.i but i just did it because i thought it sounded good with rackman but rackman it rolls off the top Rack, people say it's rackman your real name i'm like yeah i go that i would have changed it something better than that <laughs> right oh i just got a text from mr von johnson uh tell ricky i said david is a great name exclamation point yeah it like was... anybody would go to like anybody would ever go to david and gus's world famous cat house nobody <laughs> right? would have ever gone there okay? <laughs> nobody would watch david rackman on headbangers ball everybody go to david rackman to maybe get your teeth done or for some law advice or an accountant but nobody's gonna go to david rackman's cat house david and gustav's Nobody's going to go to David Gustav. I should make a shirt that says that. Oh, dude, that would be hilarious. All right, Ricky. <laughs> to uh, me. <laughs> to, well, to a, a small few. <laughs> Not to Tammy. Not to Tammy. Fuck it. Well, listen here, Bubba. But uh, uh, hold, just hold on tight, Ricky. I'm going to say goodbye to you off the air. I'm just going to hit my outro music here really quick. And uh, just hold on tight. We'll say goodbye off the air, okay? All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's been another amazing episode of another FM podcast. Ricky Rackman, thank you so much for joining us. Um, please make sure you hit up all the social media at Real Izzy Presley all the way across the board. And, of course, the Facebook sh- uh, for the show page is another FM podcast. 
Uh, hear me tomorrow morning, 4 a.m. California time on the Monsters of Rock Radio on the Dash Radio Network, live via satellite worldwide. And it's free, ladies and gentlemen. It's free. Just download that Dash Radio app and you can hear me every day. I can take you through the mornings. It is a shit show, let me tell you. I'll be back next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. I do not know who the guest is going to be. I'm working on it, damn it. But uh, you know me. Sometimes the day before the show, that's when I figure out who is on. Thank you guys for checking in. Uh, thank you, Scotty from uh, Canada. So go take off, you hoser. And uh, don't forget, we'll be uh, probably no shows, maybe one show next month because I am gone on Cruise to the Edge and the Moody Blues Cruise, which is actually the, on the Blue Cruise this year. Uh, back for one week, then I'm back for the Monsters of Rock Cruise, so I'll be back full-time on the show in March. And uh, Ace Von Johnson says, David and Gus, it sounds like a club in Boys Town. So there you go. See you guys next week. I do love you all. It is another fucking podcast.